What's up, you guys? Matt Tebow here of Savant Marketing Agency. And in this video, I'm going to break down how you can create Facebook ads for your painting business that are going to work like clockwork. How to get Facebook ads to work for your business so that you can actually attract the type of leads that you want, close the type of jobs that you want, and be ultimately be able to grow your business. So uh, what I have opened here is the ad library on Facebook. And I don't know these businesses. This is just Facebook showing me some of the Facebook ads that are running under the keyword of painting. So I just want to make that clear. I don't know these businesses, but I'm going to use them as examples and critique them in front of you so you can understand from, before your very own eyes what a good Facebook ad is. I'm going to teach you how to set them up properly so you can get the type of results that you want. Right, so let's jump right into things. Facebook ads, in terms of creating a good ad, is made up of three pillars. And I'm gonna walk you through these three pillars, each of them. So let's start first with pillar number one, which is your messaging. Messaging, right? You'll see here, these ads, they've got various different messaging, right? We've got this one, elevate your home's appeal get 10% off, you don't want to miss this deal, limited spots available, act now, right? This one says it's time to book your exterior painting, click the link below. This one, uh, yeah, has like a bunch of this uh, stuff here. And then we've got this one. And there's a whole bunch we can go through as well. This one has very limited messaging, right? Professional painting contractor. So first things first, whenever it comes to your messaging, couple things to keep in mind. The first line, I would say one of the, the, the safest things that you can do in terms of messaging is to use what's called an if-then statement. And what an if-then statement looks like is to say something like, if you're looking to get your house painted this winter, then read this ad. Or if you're looking for an exterior painting contractor, we're the contractor for you. Something like that. And so this if then statement, the reason you want to use it is it's going to quickly qualify traffic and basically call out to anybody who's looking for a painter, right? And then it's going to give them what their next step should be. So we see here, it says attention homeowners. So that one's actually not bad. Like if you were to say attention homeowners, if you're looking for a painter, then we can help you out with blah, blah, blah. Right. So the next line here that says ready to give your home a facelift isn't specific enough to painting. Like you could give yourself a face like is that a renovation? Is that this? Is that so we want to use the word painting because people are scrolling fast and we want to be able to say, are you looking for a painter? Are you looking for exterior painting or interior painting? So the if then statement in your messaging, very, very, very important. Other thing to keep in mind in your messaging is to avoid words, in my opinion, that are based around affordability or any kind of price. We'll talk about this in a sec when we start talking about the offer, but you'll notice that some of these ads will use like discount type wording or um, some of them will say like, are you looking for something like this without breaking the bank, that type of thing. In my opinion, what I would recommend in your messaging when you're creating your ad is to avoid any kind of wording based around price whatsoever. Typically, in my experience, when you use languaging based around price, is you are going to attract people who are thinking about price. And that's like at the forefront of their, um, uh, of their buying decision, right? And so I would recommend to remove any kind of languaging based off of price in your messaging as well. All right, let's jump into the second pillar, which I touched on a little bit, which is the offer, right? So we see here in this ad, the offer is 10% off uh, exterior and cabinet work, a deal you won't want to miss. Couple problems with this, right? First off is 10% off is way too much of a common offer, right? Very common offer and people see it all the time and their trust in that has been demolished because typically what contractors will do is just bump their price up 10%. It's not even a real offer. There's no real value attached to it. So um, a deal that I won't wanna miss, why won't I wanna miss this? Is this something that's going away? It says limited spots available. Does that mean that if I contact you later, I'm not gonna be able to get this? People won't believe that. 
So this 10% off um, offer, I would say, is not a really great offer to use. You'll see other offers um, that we have here. A lot of them, like this one is kind of like a 10% of all profits are donated to a nonprofit organization. So that's like a different angle for it, right? That's actually better, I would say, than 10% off because at least it's like saying that this is for a cause. So that's kind of an interesting offer, actually. But I would still say your best bet is to stay away from any kind of price related offer. What I would recommend if you are a painting business is to use what I like to do is called a value based offer. So a value based offer is giving value instead of discounting your service. So an example would be if you're doing interior painting jobs, I like to do an offer like a free color consultation where you can give it a value of 197 bucks. Hey, we're throwing this in for free included with your job. On the exterior side of things, you can do an extended warranty offer, or you could do something like a no peel guarantee or something like that. And what these types of offers do is they are conveying value. And so you can still preserve your pricing and preserve your brand. Because if you're trying to charge more for your services, it's hard to position yourself as being a higher end contractor who can charge more if you are talking about discounts and this type of stuff. So I would always err to a value based offer. Last pillar, let's talk about ad creatives. We can see a number of different creatives here and the creative is basically the imagery that we're looking at for the ad. In my experience, there are three different types of creatives that work the best for painting ads. The first is going to be a action shot like this one. So this is actually a great shot. It's an action shot. Too bad that the messaging and offer aren't present, but this picture is actually a very good picture. And I would say one that we would wanna test out. Any kind of action shot is very good to use. Um, the other type of photo that you wanna use are something like before and after pictures. Here's an example of a good before and after picture that I would definitely use. Before and after pictures are very solid. The last type of uh, video is what I see here, is a video where it's like a selfie type video of you saying, hey, what's going on guys? It's Bob here from blah, blah, blah painting. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do. And you could do a walkthrough of like one of your most recent projects. And these work really well because basically it builds like that personability, right? It's building like a personal brand behind no like and trust of who's behind the business. The reason the before and after picture works so well is because it provides proof that you actually know what it is that you're doing, right? People can see the transformation before their eyes. And the reason that the action shot works well is because people like to see people like you, you know, on Facebook, what's native to the platform is just like people on there. And so showing an image of someone doing something that you're like the service that you're offering works really, really well. What we find doesn't work well is stuff like this. This is clearly a stock photo. Um, there's no people in it. It just looks very stock and it looks very doctored. And from our experience, this type of thing doesn't work very well. Um, this type of thing doesn't work really well either. Using just a logo or something like that, this is not going to work. Um, Anything too that just looks a little bit too doctored or too much, these work really well as well. This is kind of similar to a before and after picture. This works very well, like a collage type thing. Um, anything that's similar to this kind of thing where I know this is not for like house painting, it's for auto services, but when you really doctor an ad like this and it has like these big fancy graphics and all this, I find that these don't work very well. Um, just because people, I think, see it as an ad, people just, you know, they, 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 they assume it's an ad. And so they, they skip over it because to them, it's just like, oh, this is just an ad. So you want to keep things native to the platform. So, you know, stuff like this would work well, where it's kind of like a person, a face, but I would say genuine, generally what you want to do are before and after pictures picture uh, videos like this, where it's like you explaining something about the business. And then um, lastly is the action shots. So that is my opinion on how you would run Facebook ads. This is what we do in our business and what works really, really well. 
So if you found this video helpful, what I would like to offer you is a free strategy call. If you want to learn more about how we might be able to help you with your painting business, run Facebook ads, get more leads, um, would be happy to take a look at what you're doing and how we'd be able to help you out. So you can go to www.savantmarketingagency.com and request a free strategy call. But other than that, if you guys have any questions or anything else like that, you can ask below and I'm happy to answer your questions. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you on the next one.